Welcome back to another episode, Lunar Corns. My name is Matt C. Smith. This is Rufus Tangan. Yes. That's right. But you're like, yeah, that's my name. <laughs> we are Lunar Corn on YouTube. And today we're going to talk about something really interesting, right, Rufus? Yes, that's true. I don't know what true. it is. What are we going to talk about, though? <laughs> we're going to talk about, in the business topic. So, if well, obviously, we talk about business on the channel. Yes. Rufus. We're not going to be talking about dolphin shaving. Why not? Maybe there's a channel about dolphin yeah, shaving. Maybe. Was, have you ever seen a hairy dolphin? I'm just saying. Anyway, shoot. I have not. Uh, so, if I was to start a company, correct, and I was wondering, like, how should I split the equity in the company if I have a first hire, partner, or advisor? Oh, this is such a tough question, but I'm going to answer it because it's really important. I get this question a lot, Rufus, so much, actually, because, you know, I've met many a founder in my day. I've met, been many a founder my, in my side. I've been many a founder. I've been a founder. Yeah. But I've definitely had this conversation. And the reality of the thing is that regardless of who you're chatting to about the equity, the one thing I just want to say is if you're that sole founder or that dual founder or whatever, and you're splitting equity up, like just make sure that your gut instinct and your gut feeling is always right. So um, I just make sure that you're happy with the decision. Make sure that you're happy with the, with, with, with the way things are. Okay. That's so important to, to know because... You know, if you go and give too much equity away too soon, firstly, you'll dilute yourself. There'll be less, uh, you know, of the pie for you. You'll feel disheartened. So, like, it's actually quite an important thing to understand as early on as possible. Now, there have been some, like, formulas created to sort of work out how much equity for, yeah, how much, how much, how, you know, for who. But also remember this. Human beings have a habit of overestimating their value. Not because they are less valuable than they think they are, but they don't quite understand how equity is split in a company, right? And then, like, what is the fair way to do it? Like some people think they should get half the company. Some people, you know, think they should get 10% when they've been, when there's like thousand employees and they're starting yeah. now, it's like, no. So just remember that this is gonna be a difficult process at times, not all the times, you might have some easy processes, but just go into these conversations knowing that some of them might be difficult, know that, and don't get disheartened by it, and don't, don't get emotional by it, don't let it affect you, because it will and it has to me, and it will and it has to many others, right? So okay. having said that, how do we split it, Matt? Give us the answers. We want the answers. Yeah, I do. I'll give you the answers, Rufus, and all of you watching. Thank you. Hey, let us know if you've actually, you know what, while we're saying this, let us know um, if you've had some difficult conversations with this topic. It's something that I know many founders have to deal with at some point. It's a conversation that gets to be pushed off and pushed off and pushed off. Just remember, the sooner you have the conversation, the sooner you have everybody on board, the also the sooner you realize that someone else has like a crazy expectations and then that this, this you're just you're just delaying a difficult yeah. conversation. And you're just meaning that th if you don't have the conversation straight away, I feel like I'm delaying my answer now. Yeah. Just keep, keep pushing it out. I definitely no. understand why people have the expectation of it because when you're in a startup, you have to like work around the clock. You're you're not, not always, getting but you know there's yeah, an expectation to yeah. do some sort of exceptional and work. And you have to do sure. many roles at the same time. You don't have a clear role in it. And then you feel like uh, you're all over the place. Yeah. And when the topic comes up, you, you feel more important because you do more roles. Correct. And there's one thing to remember as well is like as an employee of a startup and things like that, you know, like you are replaceable, I'm afraid. Like, I'm sorry, but you are. Like, you know what? You might be the best, you know, unless you're the CTO, or the COO, or the CO C CMO, or the, C or the CEO, or whatever, you are replaceable. Because the C-suite, the, 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 the co-founders and the, all those people, they're the ones who are meant to attract the money, uh, drive the vision, and, and, and manage the processes and development. Everyone yeah. else is effectively replaceable. So those kind of people. So like talking about first-time hire, now I'll answer your question now. So first hires, right? So first hires in a business. I mean, like the industry, there are some industry standards and benchmarks, like in Silicon Valley. First hires get anything from 0.5 to, to 3%, depending on who they are. 3% is very high. I think okay. the highest I've ever seen of it, like a first hire is about 2%. That first hire obviously was like someone who evolved into a CTO role, chief technical officer role. And they also got some more equity um, uh, later because they evolved into this role. Mm. This is why the first thing you should do, and this is what any investor who ever invests in your company will ask you to do before they invest, is set up an ESOP, employee stock and option pool. What is that? Basically, it's shares that you set aside 10% typically, 10 to 20%, 20% is very high, 10% is more realistic, 10 to 15. I set, I set aside a 12% ESOP, for example. This is it. So you set aside 12% of the company. So you basically take 12% of the company today and basically put, it's, it, it hasn't been allocated yet, but it sits there in the, in the, in the cap table as an un, unallocated employee stock and option pool. It gets diluted each round. So it reduces as everyone else gets diluted throughout the rounds or once it's allocated and things like that. But what it means is that later down the line, you can issue 1%, 
to a important employee okay. um, when the company's worth something. And you know, the, the reality of why you give equity is that it's part of the compensation package. Yeah. So that's why when someone's getting hired by the company at a market rate salary and they expect equity, it's like you're getting a market rate salary. And the only way they would give you equity is to like add value to you as an, in the company to like in, align interest, incentivize you, incentivize you not to leave to another company, right? So mm -hmm. um, equity is, is a form of compensation and it's a balancing act, it's a trade-off. You can't have too much equity with too much salary. You know, if you're having lots of equity and the salary should go down, that's why most entrepreneurs, the founders of the companies don't have big salaries, they have big equity. That's where they're, you know, like they take as little as they can to live on and, uh, uh, but don't take nothing founders. I think it's very bad when a founder takes nothing because then it sort of disenfranchises you from the company because you're not getting a daily salary from it. It's, it's a psychological thing anyway. So it's very important that you understand to, in, to issue an employee stock and option pool. Most educated investors will require that before they invest. But the best part of an employee stock and option pool is, say for example, five years down the line, you need to hire a CTO, uh, sorry, you need to hire a CEO. Yeah. A new CEO, yeah. because you've you know you're a, you're a first time founder and then the business is going so well, you need to hire a CEO. That CEO needs to get a couple of percent of the business. Whose percent is that coming from? Is it diluting mm, everyone, yeah, all the investors? That's... No, it's coming from the employee stock and option pool. That's already been allocated. Uh, well, it's already been um, issued, so you know it, it doesn't dilute everyone on the, on, on on the cap table pro rata uh, like you would do with a new investor. Uh, and then you and you don't have to give the shares away because you know then you will dilute yourself individually. So it's a way to future-proof the company to bring in later hires that are important to the business. And then obviously you can bring in key hires, technical people who maybe want crazy salaries, give them 0.1%, 0.2%. Advisors typically get 0.2 to 0.4%, 0.1 to 0.5%. To I'll give you an example. I have 0.4% of a business in the US that I'm an advisor of. Okay. And I have a time commitment. And I'm vested. Oh, yeah, there's one thing, a massive thing I forgot about, vesting. This is one thing that people think about or forget about. Vesting is something that uh, means that your shares are given to you over a period of time. So just to make things super simple, there's 100% of a company. If I, Matt Smith, joined Rufus Tangen Limited as a, with shares, you know, as a co-founder, yeah. um, you've been working on it for a year uh, or two years, and I came in as a co-founder, or say one year or six months, and you've been looking for a co-founder, but it's initially your idea, you put up some capital into it, you, you, you know, you're trying, I need to quit my job and join you, you've already quit your job and, and started, right? Say you say, Matt, I'm gonna give you 36% of the company, right? Because yeah. I'm I'm, I am your like, equal co-founder, and I'm integral to this business. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's pretty fair, 36%, I'll take that, that's pretty fair. Uh, you give me a third of the business, right? You've already, you've already issued your ESOP as well, for other future hires, right? Okay. So, uh, well, you might not have, but you will do. And then um, my 36%, I don't just get that today. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Rufus. I'm a fuck off now to the beach. No, yeah. you get given those shares over 36 months, three years, 12 months a year, 36 months. And I get 1% a month, basically. Okay. That's called vesting. So vesting structures in the example I gave. Isn't that called months, equi hire? It's like, no, no, no that's no, no. with higher. That's okay, so I'm mixing up. Oh, okay. This is when you, you incentivize someone to stay. And then, so, so I basically get 1 36th of my percentage of shares over 36 months. And typically, it would, you wouldn't get 1% after one month. You would get 6% after six months. You have a cliff. Yeah. Basically, or a floor, however you want to call it, where you basically have to work in that company for a period of time so that they need it. It's like a trial period before you start to actually vest your share structure, yeah. your shares. Now, when it comes to issuing shares in different countries, founders do your research. You can't just give someone shares in a company because, mm. like in Norway, the employee gets taxed on that share, on those shares, on the value of those shares mm -hmm. today. It's seen as it's seen as a salary. Same in many countries. So uh, you, you know, it's very difficult to give shares to to, to, to people and certain co uh, companies and, uh, like that. So you need to basically be smart about how you issue those uh, those shares to who and when. Yeah. Um, do your research. Do your homework. It's very important because you can get a lot of tax liability issues later down the line. Now there are a few models you can use. Okay. It's one called the Holloway Equity Compensation Model, which talks a little bit about uh, how to structure the ESOP and uh, e employee stock and option pools. I found a few resources online. We'll link one in the comments, which helps you decide on how much equity to give to specific employees. But the reality is, I think before you have a conversation with an employee about how much equity they get educate them yeah send them a bunch of resources online that you didn't write that or get them to talk to their friends because the biggest issue i ever see in early stage founders conversations with first employees is that they get into stalemate and then the employees feel uh, are not worth not worth it they get disenfranchised and they want to leave right like that's just the worst thing that happens and that always happens with early stage founders because they also get emotional because they're like no you're not gonna get 10 percent of the business you know like yeah 
Um, so, you know, just uh, educate that person first. Send them a bunch of links online to see what the, what is the benchmark in the industry so that they know that they should be asking for, for 1 to 0.1 to 0.4%, not 1 to 40% or something like that, yeah. which most first-time founders uh, make the mistake of. And also, these employees need to learn the lesson. I had this example with someone the other day when this early employee had crazy expectations of what they were, thought they would get and then was so pissed off and angry by the whole thing. You know, it just broke the whole conversation down. That person's probably on their way out. You know, like okay. just because they hadn't had any friends around them who told them that, dude, like, you know, uh, <laughs> you should be getting 0.5%, 0.2%, you know, 0.1%. You should be lucky with that. That's how it works. Yeah. But mo people don't know this. So you need to educate them. Um, I and feel it also is a big misconception about... Yes, you get shares, but they're not any like value right now. It's it's like not money you can like spend or anything. It's like pretty much stuck for the company. It's illiquid. Yeah, yeah. So so you cannot get that money out before they go on uh, the stock exchange or like sell the company or whatever. I think there, there's one thing to think about if you're if you are that employee, you know, having these conversations. Like, you know, ninety nine point nine 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 percent of jobs don't give you equity. Yeah. So if you want to go work for a startup, you are most likely going to be have equity available to you if you are in that first few early days and years and stuff like that. But just remember that you know there are you you know your to get point one percent of a company that does well is still going to be. Uh, like a big bonus to you over a few years or whatever. Right? Yeah, so absolutely. just remember that it's not, it's better to have a small stake of something that does big than a big stake of something that doesn't go anywhere. Right. And mm -hmm. also bear in mind that, you know, you're still an employee, you have equity now, Yeah. but you have a salary, I'm sure. And hopefully that salary is, you know, decent and it's a, it's a balancing act. So if you have 1.0.1% equity or something like that, you know, you're going to have hopefully a decent salary, uh, you know, um, and if that goes up, you're going to have less of a decent salary. Right. You know, so again, it's a trade off. It's a balancing act. But also remember that with equity comes responsibility. And that's why founders and, and advisors and all that stuff get more equity because they have a lot more skin in the game, a lot more responsibility around that. Whereas you as an employee are, you have skin in the game now, but you know, you don't have the same level of responsibility and the same trade-offs as well. Okay. Where can people go to like actually research like, okay, do I deserve this or this? Is there any like places you would go or would you just reach out to people that has been exposed to this type of situation before? Good question. You know what the answer is? G-O-O-G-L-E. Google it. Yeah. So the reason I say that is uh, things change uh, quite frequently in this industry where the, the benchmarks change and, and things like that. So, you know, articles that I've read are outdated by the time I Google it again. And yeah. I, I just did it now before this chat to think about, okay, what is the current standard, in a, you know, uh, equity allocation for certain businesses? Mm -hmm. And guess what? It's um, it's it's the same as you know, it's, it's it's slightly different to last time. So, just Google it. What is the right equity to give away? You, it's also like it's good for you. I can tell you where to go and what to do, but it's good for you to read through a few things. I'll link a few resources below anyway that I found, and um, yeah. they might be outdated by the time you watch this video. You never know. Just do your research, and just remember what I said at the beginning of this: never give away more equity than you feel comfortable with, and also. Uh, be fair though. Don't give away, like, don't be proud of how little you give to people because yeah. ultimately they're vesting, which means that they only get their shares when they really work for the three years, you know, and um, that means that they can also leave and then you get the shares back, you buy them back at the same price, right? The strike price or whatever, or they never execute them. But also one, oh my God, major thing. So last to finish that, <laughs> yeah. your gut feeling, just always as a founder, as, as, as a person who's give, allocating the equity, have a comfortable gut feeling. Do your research so you know what's fair and then never, okay. never go outside the what's fair because that's where f bad business practice comes into place when you sort of yeah. give away too much, give away too much, too many times. And all of a sudden you're sitting there with a lot smaller than you should. A lot of people maybe not delivering in the way that you want them to or expected. And then you're the one sitting there feeling resentful. You don't want to be that as a founder. You don't want to be a resentful founder. Last thing there was something really important to remember. What's that? I'm waiting. The power of the pause. You don't just get given shares. You have to buy them. This yeah. is a surprise to a lot of people. It is. They think they get given shares and it's like, oh, thanks for my 5% or thanks for my 0.5%. No, you have to buy them. And this is not the founders trying to squeeze money out of you. Just remember this. This is not the founders. Legally, those shares have to have a price. And if you're given an option, 
which is what an employee stock and option pool is, is the option to buy the shares. So if you join a company today and uh, Rufus gives me 36%, right, you know, yeah. today, right, the company's worth, say, 100,000, right? I have to pay 36,000 for those shares. Mm -hmm. If the share price is of that, you know, whatever it is, right? A um, thousand a share, right? Yeah. Um, uh, so um, uh, yeah, that's I can have can to, the owner of the company decide what the company is worth before handing when over this? When you set up stock? a company, you have to set how many shares the company yeah. has. So in Norway, you have to set thirty thousand shares. You can set more, but the basis because you know basically it's one one kroner Norwegian kroner a share. In the UK as well, you can just there's no limit to shares. You have to one share, so the one share can be worth one pound or, or fifteen pounds or a thousand yeah. pounds. But and then obviously for the most part, when funding when when investment rounds happen later, you have to add more shares and most companies will start with 30,000 shares and then split shares later. Yeah. I've done that for new investment rounds. That's what's happened with our deal recently as well. Yeah. We had to issue whole new shares. Uh, and then everyone owns still the same ownership. But just remember, fam, um, uh, employees and anyone else, like you have to buy the shares. Now, the most part, like, the price will be very low. Like it, And that's the incentive. The company is going to grow over value over the next three years. And that's another thing to think about. Like The company grows in value over the next three years uh, 20 times when you started, but you're still buying at the, at the 20 times um, discount. So you're still buying at the 20 times cheaper discount. So that's when that's a great scenario happens when, but you know, a friend of mine had to do this in San Francisco. He borrowed money from his family. It cost him $50,000 to buy his shares, right? That's yeah. not a small amount of money, you know, but he had his shares. He's like, these shares are, you know, they're currently worth half a million dollars. So when I, I had to exercise my, uh, he had, he'd been there for four years. So he had to exercise his right to purchase his options. Okay. And he did that. And it cost him $50,000 to do that. But his shares are worth half a million. So basically that, you know, he's, he's, you have to buy the shares from the strike yeah. price that's caused. Um, and anyway, just, just remember that because I think a lot of people are really surprised and they're like, hold on a minute. What? I have to buy them. There are ways, um, financial, um, um, engineering that you can do to buy those shares for a lot cheaper. Um, sorry for, um, uh, for actually foregone, uh, salary, for example, like some, you can do like, you don't have to buy them. You can exercise them. And then the company, you, you know, you owe them the company money. There's a reverse convertible loans yeah. that can be done with shares. So there's ways in which you don't actually have to purchase them. And then there are ways in which you only have to purchase them when the company is sold. Uh, cause then you're going to get money anyway, you know, cause obviously it's realistic that not everyone has $50,000 that like my friend did. He had to ask his parents, but not everyone's parents have $50,000. They can just give no. to their kid to gamble basically, because there's no guarantees. It's still even going to make it, even though the company was doing well. Yeah, absolutely. So just remember that. So founders, that is so good to say. follow it's your like, gut, yeah. never make a decision about equity that you are uncomfortable with. Do your research as much as first time, um, salary people and, you know, higher hires, do your research, learn about what is the market rate and understand your value. And the fact that a founder has given you 0.5% is not like, oh my God, it's not even a percent. No, you can't think like that. You have to look at the bigger picture here. And um, just remember, you have to buy the shares. Yeah. I think that answered some of the questions. Why does everyone says that you get so many shares then if you have to buy them? Well, why? Why do you say that? Yeah, okay. That's um, a good question. Because it's a good question. I think because, I don't know, it's just the terminology in English yeah. and, and, and it's, you know, no one's uh, going too in depth. Like you have to exercise at the strike price. Uh, if you want to go <laughs> technical, you have to exercise your share options at the strike price, which is typically at a discount to the current share price of the uh, of the company. And uh, you have to pay the strike price and the number of shares. Strike price times number of shares equals how much you have to buy the shares for. Thank you. You man. wanted to get technical. Yes. Thank you. I I think we should you wrap it up there. twice now. It's two Mondays yeah. now. You thanked me. Thank you. No worries. Thank you for watching. Yeah. Please subscribe to our channel and hopefully see you tomorrow as well. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a nice yes. evening. Ciao. Bye.